Welcome to our midweek service. Please take your hymnal, turn to 218. Tonight we will be singing God Leads Us Along, 218. Would you please stand with me if you are able? In shady green pastures so rich and so sweet, God leads his dear children along. Where the waters will flow ways the weary ones feet, God leads his dear children along. Some through things of the spirit 
And, and the things of the Spirit can only be known by the Spirit of those things. They say, what did you just say? <laughs> I said, the things of the Spirit can only be known by the Spirit of those things. Right. And so we have the Holy Spirit. He is going to lead us into what? Holy things. If we have, again, a spirit of rebellion, a spirit of antichrist, spirit of evil, they're going to lead us what? Into evil things, into sinful things. And so the things of the Spirit can only be known by the Spirit of those things. And so well, how do we get the right things? Where, where does that come from? How do we know that we are walking truly with God? And well, we need to know the things of the Spirit. And the Word of God is very clear on those things that the Spirit has been given to lead us and to guide us in. And so as he leads, as he guides, as he illuminates, as he comforts us, you know, he, he's the comforter. And again, as he works in our lives in all of those areas. And 1 Corinthians chapter 10, no, excuse me, let me, let me start here in, in uh, chapter 2. Uh, let me first read uh, verses 12 and 13 of chapter 2. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teach us, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for tonight. Thank you for your word. Open our hearts and minds to receive it. And Heavenly Father, God, to make it ours. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. And again, these verses led, I guess, to, to my saying the things of the Spirit can only be known by the Spirit of those things. What Spirit has God given to us? And here in 12 and 13, we have received but not the Spirit of the world. And so there's what? There's the Holy Spirit. There's also, as said here, the spirit of the world. And so there's other things at work attacking men's spirit or leading men's spirit righteously. And so now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. Amen. So how do we again receive the things of the Spirit from God? Again, how, how do we do that? By listening, by obedience, by looking, by watching for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as leading and guiding in our lives. So we have, for we have received not the Spirit of the world. It tells us there is a Spirit around us that's the Spirit of the world. And that spirit of the world wants to draw us away from what? The spirit of God. And so there are many, many different ways that the devil does these things. And so some of it is very simple. And man, at this stage, if you will, and even within the church, uh, the church has accepted much of what? The music of the world. You say, well, really? Come on. M music, uh, that really has no effect. Oh, yes, it does. Right. Oh, yes, it does. And if you actually do an honest study of music and of the music of this world, and a lot of people say, well, yeah, that rock and roll music. Uh, if I love my country music, <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> you're, just, you're just swapping out beer for drugs. Okay, listen to what they're saying. The spirit of the world isn't in, again, the music itself. What is it saying? What is it communicating? What, what is it making move within my life? What is it drawing me to? Music is a great draw. The devil knows it. Remember uh, he when he was that angel in heaven, that description? What was one of the things that he was described as having? Music. Music. M musical abilities. And so he uses those things. And, and to believe, again, that that has no effect is simply saying, well, hey, I can enjoy the music of the world. I can bring the music of the world into the church. It's not going to affect the church. Oh, 
Well, yes, it is. And hell, yes, it will. As we've watched over the years, you know, still several of us old enough to have watched for quite some time, as the music of the world began to filter into the church, those churches went, many of them, from being good, sound, fundamental churches, good, sound, conservative churches, however you want to put that term, biblicist churches, to suddenly what? They went to being evangelical churches, to being neo-evangelical churches, and, and then just continue. What, what was the beginning? Music was the beginning. It was one of two things, and I haven't said this for a long time, but backing up 30 years ago, I was already saying there's the two things that are destroying the church. As you watch fundamentalist churches, biblicist churches fall, it is either they change the versions first and then the music, or the music and then the versions, right. and then they're gone. They, they cease to be fundamentalist churches. They become because they move towards a new goal. A new direction, which is evangelicalism, neo-evangelicalism. And now there's even other things out there. Uh, listen, there is the spirit of the world. Right. And that's just one example. There are many, and I don't have time this evening to get into all of that. But now we have received not the spirit of this world as believers, what? But the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us by God. But what things? God has given us, how many things, by the way, has he given us freely? We can't even begin to account them. All things. Mm -hmm. He's given unto us all things that are in Christ Jesus. Right. And so he has given us all of these things. And then verse 30, which things also we speak? Okay, I have these things, all things from God, which things also, what am I supposed to do? Speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth. Okay, so what do I need to be very, very careful about? That once again, I'm not speaking as a man of the world, but I'm speaking as a spirit-filled believer. Speaking the words of God. And so man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. And so when we say, okay, uh, we're going to compare an activity, something that we want to be involved in, what do I compare that to? I come to the Word of God and say, wait a minute, what, what does it have to say about this? What about this direction? Uh, what about this that I plan to do, move into, uh, join in, whatever it may be? What comparison do I have? If I compare what I'm about to do with the world, it's going to look pretty good. But if I start comparing what I'm thinking about doing with the Word of God, suddenly, again, there's a spirit of the world and there's a spirit of God. And we need to compare the spiritual what with the spiritual. And also I need to determine when I choose to do right, how do I figure out how to do right? I want to do the spiritual things that are right before God. I go to the Word of God because it tells me what's spiritual. That's right. And so again, very spiritual what? With spiritual. And I want to know I want to do right. And so these things of the Spirit can only be known by the Spirit of those things. Is it the Spirit of the world or is it the Spirit of God? Now 1 Corinthians chapter 10. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, I want to take a look there at verse 4. Let's back up to verse 1 and read down through those first four verses. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud, all passed through the sea, were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and did all eat of the same spiritual meat. All of these things God had provided and did all drink of the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Boy, how did they walk through the wilderness? How did they come out of Egypt? How did they experience all of these things that God brought them through? Listen, there was a spirit and that spirit, and it says here, the spiritual rock, 
you know, what Moses came out and he struck a rock. Okay, there was also a spiritual rock that gave them spiritual water to drink. And so that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Listen, when I want that refreshing, when I want to go to the well that God has provided for me for spiritual sustenance and refreshing and drink, Listen, I go to Jesus Christ. He is that spiritual rock that followed them. And so as we look here, he alone can create a thirst for spiritual drink. The Holy Spirit of God, he creates within us a thirst. And that thirst isn't for the things of the world. That thirst is for the, again, spiritual drink. Like this is, I want to know, what does God have for me? What direction does he want me to go? How does he want me to live? How does he want me to treat my wife? How does he want me to work when I go to work? What, what, I want to know. I want to know how to live day by day in the blessings of God. Right. How, how, how do I do that? By following spiritual things. And when I have a spiritual thirst, where do I go? I go to he who was that spiritual rock. I go to Jesus Christ. He is the one that is the refresher. He's the one that gives us that. But again, the Holy Spirit, only he can create that thirst for spiritual drink. It's why the world is blind to spiritual things. It's why the world is blind to the word of God. Because there's no spirit to draw them the spiritual drink. There is only that what that spirit of the world, and it is always taking them away from that which is godly spirit. And so again, he alone can create a thirst for spiritual drink. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, just going to look here at uh, verse 3. Simply says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Again, where is this blessing? It says it's in heavenly places. Again, it goes right back to what we looked at at first. This is not the spirit of the world. This is the spirit of God. And then what does this spirit of God, what does it lead us into? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Well, how do I have these, these blessings in heavenly places? I have them in Christ. Amen. No Christ, no blessing. So one must have Christ, must be walking in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Spiritual blessings. He alone, and again, speaking of the Spirit, He alone can make us aware of our need of spiritual blessings. Right. Listen, when we were in the world, when we were unsaved, when we were just, just running, if you will, with the things of this world, did we bother with spiritual blessings? Were we going to, I just really hope God works in my life today. No, we weren't doing that. We were what? We were being run by the spirit of the world. We had turned ourselves over to the spirit of the world. And it was moving, motivating, taking us in a direction away from God. Never does the spirit of the world take you in a direction to God. It is always taking you away from God. And so, again, he alone, he alone can be that one who makes us aware of our need for spiritual blessing. I, I had no need for spiritual blessing before I was saved. Now, I, I definitely had a need, but it wasn't anything I ever thought about. It wasn't something I craved. It wasn't something I ran after. It wasn't something I wanted until... <clears throat> I started to be challenged, I'm talking about me personally, by the word of God, 
And the Holy Spirit started to convict me. And I said, well, wait a minute. And started thinking of all those things. And again, that took me all the way back to my childhood, to growing up in church, mom making sure we were at church every Sunday, and you know, taking me back, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit's reminding me, yeah, well, what about this? Well, what about that? Does your life reflect this? And then the preacher said something that I totally disagreed with. We were visiting this little Baptist church. And I said this before. I went home and found my Bible because I was going to prove him wrong. And of course, at the end of that week, I told my wife, you know what? He's right. He's right. But God, through the convicting power of the Holy Spirit, began to just give me a little bit of light of spiritual, again, understanding. Right. And then, that Sunday, I got saved. I mean, the light of Jesus Christ shined in my heart. And the convicting power of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. And I came to Jesus Christ. Go to the book of Colossians chapter 1. In Colossians chapter 1, I want to take a look at verse 9. Let's back up, uh, let me see, uh, verse 7. As ye also learn of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ. This guy is faithful unto Jesus Christ. He is looking for this spiritual guidance, if you will, that is necessary. Who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. Well, how did this love come? This love came in the Spirit. For this cause, because of this revealing, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge, what is he desiring that they're filled with? The knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Paul here, as he writes to the Colossians, listen, we haven't ceased to pray for you since the day that we heard you got saved. This has been a tremendous thing, a great encouragement to Paul. And he, he is just overjoyed that they have come to Christ. And so he then writes them here, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire. Well, wouldn't, you, wouldn't that be great? The Apostle Paul, New Emmanuel Baptist Church, personally, was aware when the salvation started here, the work in this church started here, and said, I desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will, the very will of God, in all wisdom, not in foolishness, but in wisdom, and spiritual understanding, that ye may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. He wants them to be increasing in the knowledge of God. And that bouncing right off, that he wants them to have all wisdom and spiritual, what? Understanding. If Paul wishes that for them, and then again, he wants them to in, be increasing in the knowledge of God, what does that tell us? It tells us we can have those things. We, in fact, when we walk in the Spirit, when we come to the Word of God in the Spirit, we can have these things. We can have that knowledge of His will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And we can be increasing in the very knowledge of God. Amen. It's an amazing thing. It was just mentioned a little bit ago. People don't know the book. I was talking to Bill just a little bit ago when we came in. And, and the foolishness that is out there in blogs and, in, in, you know, all these different vehicles that are out there for people to be preaching on, teaching on, and, and right now prophecy. All of a sudden, you know, the, it's turned back and lots of guys on there talking about prophecy and the things of prophecy. And they don't even know what they're talking about. Right. Don't have a clue what they're talking about. But boy, they sure sound good. And, and they packaged it, as, as we were talking. You know, they, if you can package it, where you can say, listen, 
Let me share with you Bible prophecy. Number one, number two, number three, number four. And just walk down through, and then they're just explaining this Bible prophecy. People will say, oh, that's fantastic. Man, you got to hear this guy. I mean, he's really got it. He understands prophecy. He's got this nail. Listen, you need to pull him up. You need... And the guy doesn't have a clue what he's talking about. He doesn't understand the Word of God. Right. And yet, they'll get on online, they'll get on a blog, they'll get somewhere, and they will have thousands, if not tens of thousands, some of these guys, listening to them, watching them. It's like some of the doctors... You know, who've been getting on and talking about COVID, or supposed doctors. <laughs> and they're not telling the truth. Either they do not know, you know, they're just ignorant, or they're actually intentionally not telling the truth to draw what? People, to draw followers to what they happen to be saying. But again, he alone can give us spiritual understanding. Well, how, how do I understand? How do I know the Word of God? Number one, to truly understand the Word of God and have spiritual understanding, one must be born again. Right. One must know Jesus Christ. For without the indwelling Holy Spirit of God, what, what does it tell us uh, that this is to those who are not saved? Foolishness. It's foolishness to those who do not believe. And, and so there are those who don't believe who believe they're teaching the Bible all the time. They'll get up, well, this means that, and that means something else. And we're No, they have no spiritual understanding. They have no spiritual discernment. He alone can give us spiritual understanding, the things of the Spirit. But when the Word of God places that out there, the things of the Spirit, and, hey, wait a minute, and I have access to the things of the Spirit. Because right. the Spirit, what, gives me access to the things of God. Mm -hmm. And as we realize that and begin to study a, a lot of the Word of God, what, to nurture us, to bring us along, to teach us, to train us, but also in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and verse 15, it tells us here, But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. Interesting, because we back up and we, we set the, the stage, if you will, by verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things Spirit of God. The natural man, that's going right back to where we started, the spirit of the world. Mm -hmm. That's what infills the natural man. And so here, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. That is why the unsaved, no matter how much time they spend in the Word of God, you know, there are theologians around this world who are unsaved men. Right. And they come up with the craziest stuff. And they deny the Word of God. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, there are church after church after church after church in America right now who have openly received uh, the LBGT, et cetera, et cetera, crowd. Listen, they're, they're, they're homosexuals. Right. They're ungodly. They're men wearing women's clothing and women wearing men's clothing. They're cross They're all of those things. And which the Bible speaks very clearly against. That's right. And they're church after church after church. Who so again, it isn't that, if, listen, if any of those folks walk in this church, we love them. I, I love them enough to tell them the truth right. about the Word of God. Now, in that, they will think, I hate them. Mm -hmm. Because I tell them the truth, they'll become angry. Mm -hmm. But prayerfully and hopefully, one might take a moment to actually think, wait a minute, 
He didn't give me his opinion. He showed me what the Bible said. Right. And then the Holy Spirit can start working and saying, this is the word of God. You know, which they may have denied for years. But we need to love them enough to tell them the truth. And churches who don't, when churches who bring them in, oh, we just got to love them. We just got to love them. And bring them in, and to bring them in to enough to what? Now their church is with them in the pulpit. Now their church is what? Just, just like the Jezebel of old that we were just looking at in, in the seven churches of the Revelation, you have allowed Jezebel to what? Teach. And what was she doing? She was leading them into fornication, leading them into adultery, teaching them things that, that God said to not do. And yet they gave her space. That's exactly what we're seeing in many churches in America today. Right. We are seeing them open themselves up. The people that God says are and their actions are abomination to him. Abomination happens to be the worst kind of sin. An abomination is a type of sin that goes against the very creative act of God. Right. A woman saying she's a man, a man saying he's a woman, goes against the creative act of God. And so however you cut that, again, it comes right back. What about the spirit of wisdom? What about the spirit of truth? What about that that God wants to lead us to through his word? Listen, he alone can give us the ability to discern things that are spiritual and carnal. Listen, God gives the believer the ability, the spiritual understanding to be able to look and say, no, that's carnal, that's worldly, that's a spirit we cannot follow. This is godly, this is wisdom, this is truth. I'm going to follow this. They say, oh, how can you know that? That's just that old book. Amen for that old book. Okay, uh, I will follow the old book because it is the word of God. Amen. And again, looking here, that reality, he alone can give us that ability to discern. And we need discernment right. in this day and age. Go to 1 Peter chapter 2. In 1 Peter chapter 2, you can look at verse 5. We'll begin in verse 4. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. And of course, he's, they're speaking here of whom? Christ. Christ. And so again, to whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, ye also. Wow, this is Christ. This is a description of Jesus Christ. And then it goes on. And ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Even my spiritual sacrifices to God are made perfect, are received by God only through Jesus Christ. Okay? And so that reality. But first, he alone can build us into the spiritual house. It's a beautiful picture. As, as people get saved, and they begin to be obedient to God, they're reading the word, they're in prayer, and, and they're being added to the house of God, this wonderful spiritual house. And they're added, and they're added, and that spiritual house of God is built up, is built up, and his house becomes as the entire world because of the believers who are around the world. And the spiritual house continues to be built and built and built. It's been being built now for 2,000 years. This wonderful spiritual house. But then it, that isn't all that verse 5 tells us. Because there he alone can build us into the spiritual house. But also he alone can cause us 
to offer up spiritual sacrifice. So I'll tell you, this is an interesting thing. Because almost any time you'd say, okay, uh, just tell me something from the Bible, just I'll give you one word. Say, sacrifice. Immediately a person would go to the Old Testament. Boom. Well, what does it say here in uh, verse 5? Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house. Wow, okay. And it, listen, this spiritual house is for a house for God. Okay, this is, this is the church, not the building, but the people. And, and so this spiritual house, a holy priesthood. We are priests for God. Right. We are representatives of God. And so a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices. We're the priesthood not of bulls and goats. We're the priesthood of spiritual sacrifice. Acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. So my spiritual sacrifice, whatever that may be, Again, when we come out of what, the spirit of the world, and most generally, uh, listen, we have our plans, we have our directions, and we, we have some things we want to accomplish. We're headed a particular direction in our lives, and then we get saved. And all of us, all of those things, all of those directions, all of those plans become sacrifices. Because God, many, many times, simply turns us and takes us in a completely different direction. Right. Okay, you were going that way. That is what you wanted. Listen, I, years ago, um, and well, Bill Randolph, you know Bill. Uh, Bill, did you know Bill was an engineer? No. I Bill, yeah, Bill had gone to college, was an engineer. And uh, that's when he got saved, and God called him to ministry. Hey, Bill's going to college. Bill was an engineer. Bill had a good job as an engineer. And then he got saved. And all of a sudden, what happened? He left the engineering job and followed Jesus Christ. Carl Sapp. Carl, you know, your brother Sapp. Carl Sapp was a nuclear physicist working on some exceedingly important things for the government. And he got saved. And all of a sudden, all those years of schooling, all of those things, all of that, I tell you, he's a brilliant man. And he said, no, no, I have to follow Christ. Right. And all of his nuclear physicist friends <laughs> thought he was nuts. But again, what the call of Jesus Christ. We have our worldly calling. We have the spirit of the world that has moved us in a particular direction. And again, the further that direction that the devil can get us, the better. You know, because he doesn't want us to get saved. He doesn't want us to walk with Jesus Christ. Right. But then somebody like Bill, you know, gets saved. Somebody like Carl gets saved. And even though they're vetted, they're along their way. This is, this is the direction of their life. All of a sudden, it's no. That doesn't mean anything anymore. But all the years of study, all the years of preparation, all that you put in, you're going to walk away from this? Yes. <laughs> For Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Because everything in this world is meaningless without Jesus Christ. Without walking in the things of the Spirit. And so walking, looking, what does the world tell me? Listen, I want to be thirsty for spiritual drink. I want to receive the blessings, those spiritual blessings that God has for me and for you. And I want to do that, what? Have that spiritual understanding. God wants me to have it. God's made it available. And, and, and we have the ability through what? The indwelling Holy Spirit of God. This wonder of a spiritual understanding. We can discern between the spiritual and, again, that which is carnal, that which is worldly. We can have that discernment. 
And again, it's through what? Indwelling Holy Spirit and Word of God. We can have that discernment. Also, we can have and be part of that spiritual house. Wow. To be part, to know, to know we're part of the spiritual house for God that is being built around the world. That ultimately, as the believers are taken out of this world and united with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And we're just, just a great picture of building up the house. And then lastly here, that we might gladly offer up spiritual sacrifice. Yes, God, I've prepared. Yes, God, I've walked that way. Yes, God, I have my plans. I was I was working a job years ago in Marquette, Michigan. And I'm just, a, just I was working at a gas station. And uh, I give my I just gave my boss talking to him and said, I'm, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna finish up uh, college at uh, uh, Alpena Community College. And uh, what I was studying was auto body repair. And I said, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna finish that. I said, well, he said, now why do you want to do that? Because he and one of the the salesman for the UP for Standard Oil Company at the time. They had been talking, and that guy was going to offer me a job with Standard Oil as a salesman. And you know, Bob just said, I, I you know, this is what we've been talking about. And he said, you know, he, he would be the one to have to offer you the job, but that's the direction our discussions have been going. And he said, Why do you want to do that? I said, I want my own body shop. That was my plan. That was my thinking. You know what that is? Have that job with Standard Oil. That would have been pretty, be a pretty good job. Um, but that wasn't my plan. I, I wanted to finish that part of my schooling. I wanted to have my own body shop. And, and I, had a, I had it all laid out in my mind. And I had it all figured out how I wanted to do this. And ultimately, what happened? Well, down the road, I got saved. And all of a sudden, whoops. I'm not going to do that anymore. That's not my goal. My goal is Jesus Christ. Amen. And God changed those worldly plans. And he changed them, again, into spiritual plans, which came from him. Listen, the things of the Spirit, we just need to simply turn ourselves over to the things of the Spirit. Say, God, this is what I want in my life. These are the things I want to be looking for. I don't want the spirit of the world leading me. I want the spirit of God leading me through the indwelling Holy Spirit of God that has been placed there by my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at the very point of my salvation. We have a wonderful, wonderful God who wants us to possess the things of the Spirit. Let's pray. Heavenly Father God, thank you for tonight. Thank you for this time that we've had in your word. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the reality of the things of the Spirit. It isn't just something we talk about. It's something you offer us. It's something that you are willing to give us. All we need to do is seek it. All we need to do is, again, pray, walk with Jesus Christ, be faithful, be obedient. And Heavenly Father, God, we will have that discernment. We will walk in the things of the Spirit. Heavenly Father, God, thank you for Thank you in Jesus' name.